I definitely agree with. Currently, the Oryx chassis stands alone in the firearm rifle stock market. And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week, we're gonna be taking a look at the most affordable chassis on the market today, the Oryx chassis. Now, for those of you who don't know or aren't aware, the Oryx chassis isn't made by just anybody. It's made by MDT or Modular Driven Technologies, who are more well known for their more premium chassis, such as the MDT ESS, ACC, or LSS chassis, which typically runs you about $700 US or about $1,000 Canadian, which is pretty much where other chassis are priced at, leaving nothing in the affordable category. Now the Oryx chassis is kind of in a category of its own at the price. The Oryx chassis being made by the same company as MDT, is gonna benefit from the expertise and build quality that the more expensive models will share. However, it won't share all the adjustability to the same extent as the other models. Then again, I mean, it's almost half the price. There are a few reasons the price is lower than your typical chassis rifle stock. For one, it's made in Canada and British Columbia. Thus, a stronger US dollar is gonna help by about 25%. That and it's built simpler and slightly less specialized and a bit more of a universal chassis. Being machined from a one aluminum piece has its advantages in simplicity. Now for adjustability, they do have the basics covered. Let's start with the butt of the rifle. You have your standard rubber butt pad, which is adjustable for length of pull, starting at 13 inches to 13 and a half. Although not, let's say, quick adjustable for length of pull. You need to purchase spacers if, let's say, this is too short which retail around $30 US or about $40 Canadian. Myself, I'm six foot and I have pretty long arms. I found, I found it in this configuration, it is a little bit too short for my liking. So a little borderline too short for my liking. The Rucol pad is sufficiently soft or well, let's say stiff to sufficiently do well on most mild recoiling rifles. Although the weight of the chassis alone will help you feel less recoil to begin with since it's 4.2 pounds. Now keep in mind, the recoil pad or butt plate does not move up or down. It is where it is, straight in line with the chassis. Now is it a deal breaker? Not in my opinion. Generally a more specialized shooter are at a level where it'll make a difference and will likely consider a more premium good, MDT chassis. Or if you can, you might want to consider fabricating something to slide up or down. Next there's the absence of the bag rider. From what I've seen in the Oryx Chassis Facebook group, well, feel free to join and ask some additional questions there, people tend to either tap some screw threads here uh, and put a Picatinny rail and then have a bag rider riding on that. For myself, I haven't really found it makes that big of a deal. But to me, it works fairly well just the way it is. Now we have the adjustable cheek piece. Adjustable, yes, but not adjustable on the fly, similar to our length of pull. We needed an Allen screw to add some spacers. Well, this is very similar. We need an Allen screw to loosen up the cheek piece and then retighten it. For myself, I needed something quick adjusting for that since while I review rifle scopes on a weekly basis. And Allen screws just aren't gonna cut it. So I bought myself some almost right fitting um, knobs like this and you just thread them in and they should hold your cheek piece perfectly. Uh, now I said I got some almost right fitting ones. These ones aren't quite perfect. They kind of catch on the cheek piece I realized MDT had the right ones the whole time. So to save yourself some time, just pick up those ones. Next, we have the grip. Uh, typically, it doesn't come with this vertical grip. It comes with the MDT overmold. And I, personally, I find them really nice. Now, the Oryx grip can be replaced with any M4 AR-15 type grip. Now, I went with the MDT vertical grip, which is about 30 bucks US or about $50 Canadian. Now, why might you want a vertical grip and not the standard one? Well, for starters, I have rather large hands, and for proper finger placement, um, I had to slide my hand slightly down on the overmold uh, version in order to get the proper finger placement on the trigger. Now, the vertical one has the adjustability to move backwards, forwards, and on slightly different angles. Uh, so it makes it really great for large hands. Not only that, but it makes a more straight rearwards pull on the trigger, which would assist in improving the way the trigger's pulled and help with accuracy. Don't get me wrong, the standard MDT overmold grip is nice. I just would consider it better suited for a medium-sized hand. Next, we have the magazine well. The magazine well isn't as easy to insert magazines as, let's say, your typical AR-15. 
you kind of have to give it a slight rock in order to get it in. The MBT brand AI magazines fit perfectly. While some aftermarket polymer magazines, I needed to file them down in order to get them to fit properly into the chassis and feed the, into the rifle. Now having two Tika barreled actions, one in 223 and one in 308, I've used both magazines. So I have their 223 in polymer and I have this 308 one, well, obviously in steel. And they have worked almost always perfectly well with the off occasion of a failure to properly feed. It would kind of catch on the way in and I'd have to kind of pull the bolt back in order to just another millimeter in order for it to go in properly. Also, the magazines can be purchased for about 50 bucks US, the steel ones, or $67 Canadian. And in my opinion, the metal ones work really well. All right, now let's move on to the front of the chassis. Underneath, you have the M-lock rail slot and a threaded hole for the swivel stud. Something I would have liked to see is a swivel stud maybe a little bit further up and more out of the way, as it prevents proper placement for, let's say, the Atlas bipod at the most frontwards position. Additionally, something that might have been nice to have, but not essential, would have been to have the same M-lock rail slots on the sides of the rifle, so not just on the bottom of it. Although had there been some, it likely would drive up the price due to the extra machining required. If you plan on weighing down your rifle, there are a few aftermarket under rail options available. All right, let's take a look at where your barrel is. Currently, I have the Tika T3X varmint set up and there is plenty of space for, let's say, if you wanted to have a thicker profile barrel in there. Now, as for the fitment of the chassis, dropping my barrel action from my plastic stock to this nice one piece aluminum chassis is pretty easy. Well, I do it all the time, switching my 223 barrel action for my 308. And you simply place the barrel action into the chassis, start the threads, make sure it's straight, tighten them up to 50 inch pounds, and you're ready to go. One thing I've noticed with the Oryx chassis is more of an observational comment. If you are used to bore sighting your rifle by staring down the breech area, you will find a real challenge to squish your face down in that spot. But, I mean, it can be done. So this is kind of how I do it. If I'm zeroing my rifle scope, I have to squish my face in here. Now, it is a little bit of a challenge. Like I said, you have to really squish your face in. Ideally, if the rifle stock was machined, um, maybe, you know, at two or three millimeters lower, it would be just a little bit easier. Now, after telling you what my thoughts are of the Oryx chassis, there are some obvious adjustable factors compared to your standard rifle stock. There's also the rigidity of the chassis that will help in precision shooting. Something I've noticed is where with my Tika T3X and its standard configuration in the plastic polymer stock, pretty much always gave me about a one inch group. One inch, one inch and a quarter, something like that after doing my load development. Now with the chassis, it removed all the flex that a typical stock would give, helping my groups from a minute of angle to into a sub minute of angle. I mean, you can verify that by looking at any of my reviews lately. I mean, my groups are pretty damn good lately. So uh, now it's important to say the factory stock of the Tika is a really good stock. Typically, rifle stocks are very flimsy, and the Tika T3X uh, varmint stock does a really good job of providing a stiff rifle stock. It's important to say the factory stock is a really good stock, and going from a minute of angle to a sub minute of angle isn't as huge of a difference as going from, let's say, a 1.5 inch group to a minute of angle inch group, which is something you should expect if you have a more budget rifle. For example, maybe the Remington 700 or the Remington 783, where the rifle stocks have significant flex to them. Now, this wasn't really meant to pick on one brand in particular. It's like that pretty much with all rifles that are around that price, around 500 bucks, 700 bucks, 800. There's usually typically a lot of flex in the uh, polymer stocks. Is this an excellent buy? Definitely, without a doubt. There are some things I would have liked to have. As we mentioned, you know, these knobs on its stock would have been kind of nice having rails, M-lock rails on the sides would have been nice. Um, before you go, let's check out what other people have mentioned that they would have liked to have on the Oryx chassis. We're gonna go straight to the Oryx chassis Facebook group. Okay, so some people mentioned they would like a flush cup on the forehand. Others mentioned that uh, they wanted M-lock rails on the side, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, they wanted quick adjustable knobs come standard, like I mentioned as well. For the money, there's nothing you could ask for. There's nothing more you could ask for. I definitely agree with. Currently, the Oryx chassis stands alone in the firearm market, in the firearm rifle stock market. 
there is no chassis. If I'm wrong, you know, put it in the comments below, but I have not found anything more affordable than the Oryx chassis in a one-piece aluminum chassis. Uh, somebody would prefer the button of the forend was flat rather than bend between the first and sem second M-lock slot. Additionally, the M-lock on both sides would have been cool. So there seems to be a large consensus that everybody wants M-lock rails on the sides too. Uh, flush cups and a folding stock. Now a folding stock, I mean, obviously that would really jack up our price from what it is now to probably something around another 150 to about 200 bucks some more. And I mean, if that's really what you need, you might want to consider the MDT ESS, LSS, and pretty much their more upper tier um, chassis. Uh, somebody mentioned a nicer mag release would have been great. So popping in and out the mag, popping it in if I was in a hurry, you know what, if I was in a PRS competition, I don't know if I could get it in that quickly, but taking it out is, is pretty darn easy, in my opinion. So now the tolerances for the magazine, well, in the Oryx chassis are pretty tight. I mean, they did a really good job in making this like a perfect fit. So getting in there is a little bit snug. A uh, simple bag rider fitting. So this one came up quite a bit in the comments of my post. Um, so maybe like people have, I see, I've been, I've noticing a lot of people putting a pick rail right here. So maybe they can put their Accu shot, their monopod here. You can check that out from Atlas or others machined their own bag rider right into it. So it's something that's fairly easy and fairly doable. I mean, if you have a drill press and maybe a task tap and die set and some spare steel, I mean, I know we're getting a little complex right there, but it, it can be done. Accessories, I don't know what you mean by accessories. Bag rider attachment, again, it comes up. Quick detach mounts, people wanted a few more of those. Somebody wanted to come stock with the vertical grip. I mean, yeah, just gotta pay another 30 bucks. Somebody mentioned for the uh, the slight bend in the forend, you could put the Oryx Arca rail in order to get it perfectly fat. It's thicker at the front and thinner towards the magwell, making a perfectly flat platform. Being able to run a cleaning rod down it easily. I mean, in my opinion, running a cleaning rod down this was super easy. It goes down perfectly. Uh, although maybe if they have a shorter cleaning rod, um, getting it from here to there might be a bit of a challenge. So I'm, that might be what they're talking about. Personally, I use uh, the Hops carbon fiber ones. And I mean, I've been using them for probably about six months now and I'm never going back to those old aluminum ones. <laughs> so maybe check out one of those and get yourself one of those and you probably won't have that issue. I'd like to be able to remove the bolt without dropping the cheek piece right down every time. So this is something that, I mean, I've noticed significantly. If you have your, let's say your bolt in, you will not be able to take out your bolt. You do have to remove the cheek piece in order to get your bolt out. Um, I'm guessing for most people, this probably isn't really a big deal just because they're not re-zeroing their rifle quite as much as I am. I mean, I'm re-zeroing my rifle every week. So for me, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's mildly annoying, but not really to the point that I think they should make any changes to that. I mean, it's pretty quick to get these, these little quick knobs on and pull it right out like that. So I don't necessarily think it's a big deal, in my opinion, for myself. Uh, making the shoulder pad a little bit deeper so you can look through the barrel to adjust the scope easier. So something I mentioned earlier, when you're zeroing your rifle stock, you really have to squash your face here. I mean, you could, oof, I don't wanna say this, but technically you could grind down a little bit on this, maybe another two, three millimeters. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! in order to get your face squished in just a little bit deeper. I mean, I guess they could have machined it slightly lower and I don't think it would compromise at all the, the, the strength of this stock. Cause I mean, this is, this is built like a tank guys. This is built pretty darn tough. Uh, I think they could have machined it a little bit lower so we could squish our faces in just a little bit more. I mean, other than that, I think this is a excellent, excellent chassis. I don't think you can ask for anything more for the money. I mean, typically what you see around this price is some polymer stocks. I mean, they have a lot of adjustability, but are one piece aluminum. Uh, in the future, we are going to be checking out the new uh, MDT X L L X L R X L R X L R, which is a polymer aluminum chassis. And we're going to be checking that out uh, in our reviews as well. Now this one, I have had it for about Oh, I wanna say about eight months now, and I'm really loving it. I did wait a long time before doing this review just to see if there was really any real complaints I would have, but I don't. I mean, this thing is damn awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna keep it for a very long time. I mean, as long as I have Tikas, I'm gonna keep it. And I love Tikas. So, if you guys enjoy this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. 
I'll see you next time on Affordable Optics and Rifle Report.